working man, it sucks. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan. Happy holidays. We hope you're enjoying yourselves. Uh, I'm here with uh, my co-host, Josh Ricardo. What's up, buddy? Hey! <laughs> you almost forgot my name. It's been so long. Dude, I just did a shot of like espresso like <laughs> just seconds ago. I'm like Jack. <laughs> happy Kwanzaa, happy uh, Hanukkah, happy holidays. Merry Christmas, everyone. So I bought my son. Every year I buy him Jordans. Oh, do you really? Yeah, and this year I had to like, I was this close to cashing in coins. <laughs> That's how I, <laughs> like you get there and they're like, sir, these need to be wrapped. <laughs> they need to be in the wrappers. <laughs> I, I was looking up a coin star, and they take like yeah, almost eleven percent. Yeah, dude. I know. Just to cash your coins. So in. I have bags and bags of change because I have a TD Bank account and I used to it used to be free. Yeah, I was and looking for that. It's yeah, gone now. It's totally gone. It's yeah. been gone for years. Yeah, I have like just in a back of a closet. I just, I'm because I'm the same way. Yeah. I was I was researching um, <laughs> like self wrappers. You can buy one for oh. like twenty five dollars. Oh, like the machine? Yeah, like a home yeah. like thing, and I'll I just do. If I had like a, if I knew I had like two hundred dollars in coins, I think mine's maybe like eighty bucks. So I think I have close to like three hundred dollars in coins. That I would do. It's it. like three years of just bags of just back in a corner, but it's like I'm I not, couldn't justify buying it. This is like my, if I was gonna eat into my. It's like my savings. It's like my four hundred one k at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I want to look at my son like Tony Soprano. You will inherit this. <laughs> this in my shoes, you'll inherit. <laughs> You just open up a closet. Let's hope there's, you're at 11 and a half. There's, there's shoes and just a bunch of bags of coins underneath it. All of this will be yours. It's so, I mean, the show, every time I'm about to do the show, I always think about, what did I do that was like working class hole today? Like, I, I literally think about oh, that yeah, now because of the show. Yeah, yeah. And it's like when I was, uh, I first got my first job uh huh, and I moved out, I bought, I must have spent three grand the first year in DVDs. <laughs> Oh, because okay. I was like, I, I did this. This is how nuts I am. I did this thing where a buddy of mine, Ray Combs Jr. Shout out, brother. I was talking to you yesterday. Uh, his stepfather owned a condo and he was like 9-11 hit. He was like, dude, I just need someone to pay the fees. So just get someone to move in with you. Super cheap, beautiful place. Had my own room. Change the lock. So like, I, I wanted it to be an apartment. So I put like a refrigerator uh, yeah. with a microwave. I had yeah. all my food in there. I didn't keep anything in the kitchen. It yeah. was all in my room. Uh -huh. And I wanted to make it like a, a, a fucking rest haven for me. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I bought all these DVDs. And I thought, look at me. <laughs> and all my glory. You ever, you know that actor in uh, Boogie Nights, uh, Luis Gomez? Is that Gomez? Luis? Uh, Lu uh, Luis. Uh, Luis. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, though, yeah, right? Yeah, He's yeah. in a Luis lot Gomez, of I think is his last PTA uh, oh, no, movies. I know. We're thinking, I'm thinking of I'm thinking yeah, of the yeah, comic. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. Luis something. I yeah, forgot yeah. his name, but he's in a ton of stuff. Ton. Love really him. famous. But in Boogie Nights, he wants to be in a porn so bad. And one of his lines is, I want to send it back home to my say, look at me and all the beautiful women. I have. That was me in my fake apartment <laughs> with the DVDs. Yes, just all, look at these DVDs, dude. That reminds me of like this is where I grew up. So like I was when I was working at the uh, I was a bus boy. And we used to, I used to party with this di the dishwasher. We used to hang out, and he was like such a stoner. Like the company you keep, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. So we would go over to his house every once in a while, and his brother, you know, we were just burnouts, and it's like Levittown, like shit houses and everything yeah. like that. But and but you know, I didn't. It never really registered to me until I met his brother, and his brother was like talking down to us, and we're all just burnouts, and he's just talking down to us, and he goes. Look at you! Look at this room. It's a mess. And he he goes, look at this. And he brings me into his room, and he's got wood paneling. <laughs> <laughs> the pride, <laughs> the pride he hey, took. Hey, see, come on, is that a nice? You want to see something to strive for? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you two losers in here. Look at this with wallpaper. Come on, look at this. He lives in a <laughs> in a Volkswagen van. <laughs> the wood paneling. <laughs> Oh, dude, like a Beach Boy song, and it dawned on me at that moment too. I was like, "Oh wow, we are all trash here." This right? Is, like you even knew? Like, yeah, I was like, if, "This is if this yeah. guy's bragging about this." <laughs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> uh, so this is a mini episode, everybody. This is one of our minis. This is a mini, and we're doing a mini because it kind of falls in a weird time frame. But yeah. we thought, why not talk about New Year's resolutions? 
Yeah. <sighs> Go ahead. Yeah, because I right. got some thoughts. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So I, I remember like, now I, because I work in offices and all this stuff, goal setting is, oh, that's like a, it's a it's whole like a art form. It's, it's a religion. It's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've had 20 plus years of, of goal setting. Mm-hmm. And it's different for everywhere you go, but like the bigger the company, the better the goals are, even though it's just the verbiage is better. And that's all it is. It really, really right? apply to my level. It's, but you're saying the same thing every yes, year. You're just it's using how you're saying it. It's just using a thesaurus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So I look at also stand up like I have a like 2024 for me is a make or break year. There's just no way around it. I'm old. I'm old for comedy in the sense of establish you have to be way more established at my age to continue on what you're doing in a way that's not in my opinion being just someone that's taking space i don't want to take up space right the podcast i feel like i'm you know you and i are putting something fresh and unique into the infrastructure so i'm proud of this oh yeah but beyond that from a stand-up perspective i you know I really don't want to be a guy that's, you know, taking spots that are in developmental places away from people that are actually out there every night trying to get into the clubs and all that. Right. I am at a place where I need to be selling tickets. Yeah, because so, you've been in 20 years now. I've been in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so for me this year, like my goals this year, are like get the podcast to where it needs to be and, you know, get a tour going and do a special at the end of 2024. That is where I'm at. And that's all I'm looking at. But it reminded me of like when I was a kid – you know getting jobs like what were my goals like working class goals what what were they i'm trying to figure out like what were my new year's resolutions when i was 25 in stand-up like what were they Mm -hmm. uh and i for the life of me can't remember any of them my biggest goal that i remember that i wanted to i wanted to own a home by the time i was 25 and just how ridiculous oh, yeah, of a yeah. goal that was oh no so that's funny you, i'm glad you brought that up because my goals for stand up when i was like 25 are like it had nothing to do with anything that was in my control it was always like be uh on letterman <laughs> like, no idea how to get on letterman yeah, right. like There's no... be on letterman <laughs> get a hbo comedy special well right that's the same thing as the house thing yeah it's like yeah get a good job start saving some money stop being Seven a drug to addict 10 <laughs> spots a week at the cellar <laughs> Literally, like, yeah. it was like, the that I think that's what my point is, now that I've talked it out loud, the working class goals were always just dreams. <laughs> they were never like, <laughs> yeah, right. how do I get that? <laughs> yeah, right. What would, I, what would I do to go about getting <laughs> 10 spots at the cellar per week? I honestly think you're, you're confusing working class, too. I don't know that that's working class. I think that's just a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, they sometimes go hand in hand. Oh, oh I'm not saying the Venn diagram is exclusive in, all, in any regards. <laughs> but it was always like, make 200 000, like Just always oh, yeah, yeah, lofty, yeah, yeah. Yeah. with no real... Understanding yeah. of the plan. When I was 16, I had a goal, uh, own a Camaro. <laughs> that was it. Have a gut. Yeah. Own a Camaro. <laughs> yeah. and then I would, I would, own a house. <laughs> and then own a house. Yeah. Can you imagine if you got all those things, how shitty your life would be still? Well, what would be amazing is if I just happened to fall into all of those things. Well, I know. excluding the gut. I mean, that, <laughs> that <laughs> would have been, earn that that been fitting. Uh, <laughs> no, but if I got a Camaro and a house by the time I was 25 and still living the way I lived, yeah. I would have lost them. Oh, yeah. And then that that's so much sadder, right? <laughs> to lose when you, everything. When you have lose nothing, your dreams. When you have nothing and then still have nothing, it's fine. When you've gotten you know something. What and you then, thought was the, yeah, what you the were, creme de la creme. Yeah, yeah, right. And then you just lost all of that. You're like, it's so much sadder sadder right <laughs> did i uh i i don't think i've ever until recently set like any kind of resolutions that i thought were gonna work yeah the only one i really do now is like exercise oh really and that never really happens you know it's like yeah, i gotta drop so 10 should pounds. we do our new year's resolutions now you want to do a resolution all right let's do it. okay okay let's do it all right I mean, so, what? We're, it's a short one we might uh-huh. as well do it okay cool all right uh, so, okay, help me define resolution though before we do this. What yeah. the fuck's the resolution? Because well, I confuse them. That's here's the, the thing: because I grew up Catholic, and to me, it's always like Lent. Oh, like yeah. giving it's not, something it's not, up. We're, you yeah, know we're, what we're what not mean? giving anything. Because I was just going through it. I was like, I guess I had cookies. I've I'm given give up enough cookies. up. <laughs> 
I've given enough. My New Year's resolution: <laughs> stop eating two bowls of cereal before I go to sleep every night. Like that's I mean, that's a solid. That's a good resolution. That's a actually. really good resolution yeah, yeah. for you. I think that's uh, all right. okay. Okay, so you're, I am going to for my New Year's resolution number one for Josh on the show. I'm gonna not get. Where's that anger? What I'm looking for. I am going to approach things as an individual as opposed to taking things personal. And what I mean by that oh. is instead of, so, like, you know, all the times I'm slighted on the show that I've mentioned uh -huh. every week, I have uh -huh. a new slight. Yeah. Instead of it being about me, I'm going to let it be about them. Okay. Or whatever it was that angered me. Or like a larger perspective. A bigger picture. Yes. So that's my New Year's resolution. Oh, to look I like at things it. in a bigger picture as opposed to this, which tends to make me very aggravated. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So that's so my we, first resolution. So this that's for the show? Or a person or in everything. Life? Oh, okay. Everything. The okay, show cool. everything. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, hmm, now I'm thinking of the show. You know, I'm gonna buy a better camera because <laughs> uh, I edit these clips, and like your your single looks so much better than mine. I'm just like it's always like soft, out of focus, grainy. <laughs> I gotta get a better camera. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be mine. Yeah. Okay, All so right. that's number that's my, one. That's my show resolution. Okay, what? Uh, and then I, the cereal, and then also the cereal thing. Which <laughs> okay, which, so let's keep you on track. So you can no longer. Longer eat two bowls of cereal before bed. I mean, that's the resolution. That's the resolution. That's the resolution. Yeah. So even if you do one, that's an improvement. Okay. Okay. See, that's setting okay. you up for it. Some, okay. Some kind of win. All right. Okay. And okay. then buying a better camera. I don't know. That, that's a money thing. I don't. Know. Or is it a you thing? What is that? It's it, no. It needs to happen. It needs to happen. It needs to happen. Yeah. Okay. I keep dragging my feet because I'm okay. cheap. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, it's uh, always it's funny because you're you're cheap, but you hide it in such a way where it's like. I don't want to do that yet because, you know, the this and the this and then the retina. Like, you always, go into, like, the tech. I'm, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you that's what I do. You find a way to convince yourself I'm like, and I'm I'm do just, it. I'm just dragging my feet yeah, on yeah. it. But the thing is, it's it's the real reason is because I feel like I don't have the time to do the research. But meantime, I'm doing – I'm constantly just carrying it around in my brain, which is just slowing me down. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a, just buy yeah. the fucking thing and forget yeah. about it and you and move on. There's like this uh, viral. It's like my wife like uh, doing research for like uh, we're going on vacation. She spends two weeks. To, I'm like, you spent two yeah. vacations well, hold on. researching this but vacation. But if she can fucking find the, the deals though. I guess. I mean, you know, I, I'm all about finding the deals with vacations. But I hear what you're saying. It's, it's just another way to prolong actually doing what needs to be done. Um, I, this, th this clip's been going around that I saw that reminded me of you. It's uh, well, myself first and then w the camera okay. stuff. Oh, no, the no, camera the camera stuff. stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's like this guy's holding a 12 ounce like Coke or uh -huh. something. Okay. And it's like, do you realize the longer you hold on to something, the heavier it gets? It's more of a metaphorical like let go. Yeah. Because it gets heavier yeah. and heavier. No matter how much the weight, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And I feel like that's what you are with the camera and that's how I am with... Dude, holding on to a lot of slights. So, uh, oh yeah, the slights thing. I, I try and let those go as yeah, quickly as possible. Yeah, you're good at that. You're better. You're better. Yeah, better. I'm not good at it, yeah. but I'm better at it. I think. But the, uh, but for me, the thing is like t the to do list. Yeah. The to do list, man, just weighs me down. I t yesterday I was like, I gotta get all this little shit done, yeah. and I just burned it out, and like I finished. Uh, that was how good I, did that feel? It doesn't feel good it anymore. It didn't really. It was like fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Isn't it was funny how like I used to get off on. Here's the problem I had is that I got so wrapped up in the the baby. I have so many things to do every day that are just everyday things. Yeah, right. Right. When before, before my son and before the dog, I just had like Josh things to get done. Right. And Josh things to get done are like, I'm going to clean the whole house. Oh, I feel great. The house looks great. Yeah, see, that's a good. And feeling. then I'm I'm yeah. hanging out. Oh, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get in and knock all this shit out for work, or yeah. I'm gonna go do this clip. Now, because my day is filled with like, get up, get him, wash his, all the shit I do every day, and it's necessary. There's no choice. Right. It doesn't feel like I accomplished right. anything. Yeah, yeah. And I had to figure out how to get my brain to a place where it's like, dude, you just did all this stuff, regardless if it you had to do it. A lot of people don't do it. 
I can point to a lot of parents right. and a lot of people that just don't do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just go, fuck it. I'm not doing it. Yep. And I don't say fuck it. So I've been finding ways to like, oh, that's a win. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't say fuck it. Yeah. It's you a got win. it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah it absolutely. Done. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't have like, you know what it is? Because it, I, you don't get that like, um, that relief that like that like it comes over you like oh man I got all that done until you're like in the clear until you have that moment yeah. of like you know like when Gene and I uh, go on vacation uh, mm. I'll have that sure but it's like man I'm just like checking off yeah. shit before yeah, yeah, I yeah, go yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like th- that's Christmas time though oh dude. yeah it's it always like that it because is. you get that week I don't know if you get that week off you get that week off for, uh, I, for uh, job? I I'm gonna take it but I used to not oh, now okay. I take the week yeah, because yeah, yeah. I have to there's just no way yeah. you know I didn't understand how much it was going to take to to be a quality parent as well as maintain the stand up acting stuff. Yeah. And also, and also the, jobs. the day job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah it's totally. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a whole new scenario. Yeah. And it's only two years into having him now that I'm like, oh, fuck, I really need the time. Yeah. To not do anything. Just to be like a dad. Yeah. You know, to just do that one just, thing. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, yeah. on the, like, my weekend is no longer a weekend, especially if I'm doing shows. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, he's home all day. Mm-hmm. I'm doing shit mm-hmm. with him, mm-hmm. whether it be fun stuff or stuff I don't want to do. It's a job. Like right now is my day off. <laughs> this is my time off from him. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a whole new like situation. Well, yeah. that's like today when I was like, when I got here today, I was like, dude, I was fucking crazy. I was running around. And then uh, as soon as I got in the car, I put on, I was like, all right. Um, it's done. Anything I missed is is it's, missed. It's in the past it's, now. It's missed it's in now. The fucking I'm, wind. I'm yeah, yeah, driving yeah, yeah. over. If I forgot the microphone, I guess I forgot the microphone. I can't even. <laughs> you, but you I'm know just, that's letting go, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah totally. You're on it. Yeah. You, you're on it. It is what it is. And then I put on Metallica Master of Puppets, and I felt fantastic. Oh, I just love how that's like your jazz. Oh, dude, it's Me- totally Metallica's my jazz. your jazz. Metallica like just settles me out. That old Metallica. The, uh, those like yeah, 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 yeah those first three albums. Yeah, even uh, Injustice. It's so. funny that um. A big body of work. I would consider Metallica having a big body of work, for the most part. Yeah, like, well, they have, I mean, what, they have fifteen ch- years of albums they put out. Sure, sure, sure. But they, I mean, they have this. Uh, there's this um, major divi- dividing. Well, that's what I'm saying. There are very few groups and bands, in my opinion, that carry over the same quality with evolution into their their later work I would, I, I, I would compare everyone them, has their era right but I would compare them to like Aerosmith so there was like the Aerosmith of the 70s yes right? dream on it Aerosmith All and that. then there's and then there's like love in an elevator yeah Aerosmith. or the Armageddon I don't Aerosmith. know yeah I mean he's got a gun like well, that no, kind no, of Aerosmith the, um, right the, all those videos of Liv Tyler that era of Aerosmith yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's the, and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right? and uh I don't want to miss a thing. That's Armageddon. That's the Armageddon. Oh, I don't okay. want to miss a thing. That was the Armageddon movie. That was uh, the song. Oh, they did the song for Armageddon. I yes. have no idea. And oh, that okay, was cool. a massive hit. Right. Where people go, who's Aerosmith? Yeah, uh, right. Like, yeah, like some, and then yeah, you have right, yeah. something's wrong with the world today where he's holding his dick. Remember that? I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> I stopped at JD's got a gun. You know, like, like, yeah, Keith yeah. Malley, uh, well, we're gonna have Keith on at some point. Keith Malley from Keith and the Girl Loves Earl Smith. He's like obsessed with Oh um, really? Like what's even the lead like singer's name? Uh Fuck. Steven Tyler. He's obsessed with Steven Tyler. Interesting. Oh, I think he jacks off to Steven Tyler. Huh. Well, I mean he, he looks like lo- a woman. I mean, he looks like an old grandma at this point, but like, yes, he's looked like a woman for a long time. With the <laughs> but fucking, his hey, his range is unbelievable. Oh sure, oh, dude. Yeah, but yeah. you're right. He does look like a female. Yeah, yeah. He's got, well, he's got he dresses like like he's got the like the the sashes. It's funny it's when kinda, those guys get old. You're like, okay, it's really a female. Yeah, right. It's really a female vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, for so. because I don't know if they, the young look is like, oh, you're just being a rock star. Right. As they get old, you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, you look like my aunt. who, My cool aunt. <laughs> My very cool aunt. No, yeah. My fashionable aunt. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Who lives in the big city. <laughs> okay, so you have resolutions. Now what do we want in 2024? What's our wants? So I'll start. Yeah. I would love in 2024 for the podcast to grow to a point where we could start touring with it. Yeah. That's a Yeah. And then my second is that the special I put out, which I'm not going to say what it's going to be, but I hope that that puts me into another category where I could start making money and touring without ever needing a comedy club ever again. Mm-hmm. I would love to never need a comedy club. 
Uh, there was like this thing I sure. read you where mean, like, so you're just doing theaters like, yeah, well, even that I would, even, I would rather, I would rather never be. Okay. I saw this thing today where it said, I will never forget the people who were hard on me when I was, when I was having a hard time. Uh-huh. And for me, uh-huh. I felt that comp, the industry itself has been hard. I'm, I'm a whiner. I'm a bit of a baby hard on me and i've been having a hard time for a lot of years it's been a hard go so i would love to figure out a way to make money and further my career as a stand-up without ever having to deal with anyone that ever like never having to make money for anyone that's ever put me down yeah but i yeah you think that's overboard i just think that that resolution is like you're adding it's like a hat on a hat you know what i mean like it's like you why don't you just stick, a great way of saying why don't you just okay i'm to gonna the, stick to just like i just need to make uh, yeah. i just get some some stuff going on just sell some tickets yeah right just sell some tickets all right how okay. can you sell some tickets and watch my enemies hey. fail <laughs> <laughs> i like to watch my enemies perish but for 2024 i'll put that one on the yeah, back put that burner 2025 2025 yeah, 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 is yeah, the yeah, yeah, enemies yeah, perishing the enemies yeah yeah all that Thank stuff you, right thanks for, thanks for sorting me out what do you got? Uh, what am I gonna do? I, I I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do like an extra. You know what it is? I'll tell you what. My fucking real it's resolution. Wants, not resolutions. We're doing wants. Oh, wants. Yeah, because we already did resolutions. Oh, Those okay. are perspective based and also something we can control. That's our resolution. You can control whether or not you have one bowl of cereal. You can control oh. what kind of camera you buy. Oh, okay. right. Okay. Just like I can control what my resolutions were, uh-huh. but my wants. I want all of those things that are going to be things I can control. My want from that would be to develop the show, getting its own Patreon, being able to tour off of it, those kind of things. That's I my mean, 2024 wants. Oh, my uh, headline. You want to start headlining? Headline. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 45 minutes solid. Yeah, 50. By hour. the end of 2024, have Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. Yeah. Headline and, yeah. And get past it more clubs. Yeah, yeah. Why? Why uh, the club part? For cause I really hate them. What What do you love about the comedy clubs? What, what do, do the comedy clubs give you? Oh, uh, they're closer. I don't have to drive. Oh. I can just go and do two spots in a night and make the same money and, you would if you drove work, to well, an hour maybe, away. Maybe not the same money, but like I can work on material. I can get getting spot like getting up multiple times a night mm-hmm. is. Absolutely. But what if I told you you could have that without the comedy clubs? Like you can get up places where you can do valid workouts, yeah, well, develop material, drive. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like there are a bunch of places that aren't comedy clubs in New York City that do one off one night shows. So what if you did only those shows still made money, still developed your material in front of real audiences? Yeah, but here's the thing. I want it all. I'll, yeah, I'll take that too. Okay, so you want <laughs> both of those? I'll do sure. I mean, <laughs> I yeah, I'll I'll take that. Yeah, cool. What else you got? Yeah, I'll take it all. What are we doing here? But the yeah, co- but the comedy How about club like thing. a suitcase full of money. Can we do a suitcase full of money? <laughs> no, but I'm saying like if you had that one, you. What I'm saying is it makes would no I difference choose, to you. Would I Which choose? would you choose? Uh, I would probably choose. Here's the thing. See, I'm still coming up. Uh, I would probably choose But you're almost 10 years in Aren't you? No, seven Seven So I would choose the clubs Just for the I like to be around Better comics Ah I like to watch You're right I like to get off stage You need that And watch somebody Just Just a fucking Pro Just going up And just murder And like I like to be around that Well let me say this then Let me ask you this question Okay All right. When you look at a bill At a comedy club We'll, we'll be done after this. This is last thought. <laughs> when you look at a... Uh, I got the fucking giant clock here. You don't need to look up at that shit, all right, Ed? We got, we got, we got, what's his name? Got? I know, I'm telling you. So I got a... Uh, all right. Now, I look at some of these bills. Comedy Cellar always has great comics. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that place, sure. Yeah. New York Comic Club, great comics. Yeah. But there's some other places where you're like, would I get better on this bill? Am I going to see comics that I respect, that I think are going to push me to be a better comedian? I mean, I don't know. If you want me to make a spreadsheet, I can make a spreadsheet. I'm, I'm just, just making saying. a generalized statement, though. But I'm saying... I get past I don't, that more clubs. That's I don't... It. My point of view is I don't think... I think we're in a place now in this industry mm-hmm. where we would have to specify which clubs those were. Because I, I agree with you right. 
The reason why I'd want to work the Comedy Cellar and New York Comedy Club on a regular basis is because I know that every night on the same bill as me, I'm going to see if I can follow some guy, right? Yeah. Or some guy that's amazing. Some lady that's amazing. Some fucking powerhouse. You can follow me at Josh Ricardo and go to joshricardo.com to see any tour dates. I'm at McGowan uh, Comedy on Instagram at McGowan.com. We'll see you guys again soon. Have a happy new year, everybody. Happy new year, everybody. Happy new year. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.